All right, I'm just making this video to kind of document and some thoughts, process my thoughts um, that I had while running just now. Running and then walking for a bit in this amazing sun. So let's start with, uh, there was this encounter. This homeless man asked me about uh, Patulo Bridge. Where was Patulo Bridge? And I just gave him this perfunctory answer, just all business. And, uh, and, uh, and I kind of stood there for a moment thinking like, should I go further with this uh, conversation or not? And then I ended up just uh, leaving, just walking off. But when I was walking off, I had this crushing, dropping feeling that um, I had kind of done disservice to uh, the social fabric, if that makes any sense. And it just made me think like, what the fuck is this? What the fuck am I doing if uh, I cannot even spare the space in my life, the space in my day uh, to, to accept the hand that he had accept, ex uh, extended to have that conversation with him? Because... Um, not only am I, uh, not only was I just like floored by my own inca incapacity to uh, to give him that space to have that to for it's not even just for him for me, right? We both like if we can't even do this, then is this life that I'm living, right? But uh, but then on the other side of that, also like for him, like what am I, what am I doing, in his mind? Like in his mind, he has every right to think that. Uh, like for example, Vancouver is becoming a shittier and shittier place where everybody's just so caught up in the rat race that uh, nobody can even have a conversation. Nobody can even be nice, friendly anymore. So I, had, I was contending with that, uh, and I'll just I'll just keep going and riffing in this video like like a schizophrenic, just jumping here and there because that's kind of what I was doing. Like then I was thinking, okay, well you know what? What would it take for me to be able to accept that? conversation that accept, accept his hand from like let's say a homeless person on this on the at a nice park this uh but walk by the water like this um is it even worth it and then i came up with like no like I, I wouldn't want to go back like it's like pandora's box like the it's already out of the box like to go back to a former way of life where i could afford to have this conversation with him it, is not palatable to me and i prefer to be in this rat race because um it's like you just can't put the put it cat in the back back in the box again. You can't, uh, and uh, number one, like you can't put the cat in the back in the box again. But number two, also that the what this lifestyle affords is worth more to is worth a lot to me, right? And I don't want to give that up. For example, the the fact that I can have so much leverage. Like, why is it that I was it was unpalatable for me to have that conversation? Was because it was so low leverage. The person I am having the conversation with. Like it wouldn't amount to anything. It wouldn't help me get ahead in this rat race. It wouldn't help me develop my ideas or have more of an influence or live bigger, right? I'm trying to live bigger, just like everyone around me is here. And um, we all want leverage, right? Le high leverage activities, high leverage social circle, high leverage connections. And uh, that is enjoyable in, in and for itself. Uh, and I have no wish to put the cat inside the box again as a... Uh, as evil as it's as cold as it sounds right but um so then kind of like how you survive in this in this kind of society is you is you cultivate your own social connections i was thinking like your own social circle not an original idea i'm drawing on uh, Owen, owen's cook's idea owen cook's ideas as usual but uh then it made me think okay like what would it take to build my own social circle and i was thinking to like do i have any people in my life that i want to surround myself with to build that bubble with uh, and I could only come up with like one person really <laughs> it was kind of unavailable uh, but it it, it uh, primes my mind to like now look for opportunities like uh, I want to build my own bubble my own social circle and uh, connect with these people on a regular basis I have no need to uh, be talking to everybody at a park let's say and it's cold it's a cold brutal reality that uh, it, I wish didn't have to exist. I wish you, um, and, and there might be a way, right? There might be a way. I was th also thinking, uh, okay, before I move on to this other, okay, let me just cover that other thought, um, finish that other thought that uh, there is of course a problem with having a social circle or a bubble like this. And it's, it's, it's captured by the word itself, the bubble, right? You, uh, you don't get exposure to ideas outside that bubble. So you can be in an echo chamber. So I have to find some workaround for that eventually. So moving on then, uh, 
there could be a way for me to have that interaction with someone in the park, let's say, and expose myself to new people in this way, because that is also a requirement, right? Like, even as you have your own social circle or bubble, you have to leave yourself open to the luck in life. Increase your own surface area for luck. Like, you have to be able to run into people, uh, especially if you want to make connections, like even romantic connections or friends or whatever. There has to be a way to leave yourself open up, leave myself open for that, right? So I, I was riffing on that, and I was thinking, you know what? Uh, and then I, I, I saw this uh, sexy girl uh, jogging, like just looking absolutely incredible. And of course, there's no shortage of such girls on a, a walk like this beside the water. They're all out here running, uh, dressed unbelievably sexy in like Lulu, Lululemon pants or whatever. <laughs> and uh, But then it got me thinking, okay, so I would like to connect with these people, but it's like, why would they give me the time of day, right? Just like I'm not giving the homeless person time of day. Why would a, a beautiful girl like that, uh, how, how could I kind of interject myself into interject myself into her reality, right? Uh, in, in a way that um, has a basis, right? Has a pretext, whatever. And then I was thinking, you know what? It's, it's the aesthetic. And then I was kind of went on to this idea that, you know what? The, 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 the aesthetic is the, is the tribe. Or the tribe is the aesthetic, okay? So, for me, like, it, it makes sense that uh, to have access to someone like that, that girl who's jogging, that I would have to embody that first, okay? To be the jogger myself first. And, I, and I, it makes sense to embody that aesthetic completely, to really buy into that aesthetic. That's what's the, what the aesthetic is for, right? It's like, anytime you have a tribe, you'll have it emblazoned with some kind of logo or emblem a motto, a anthem, flag, something of that sort, right? You need a marker of that sort. Otherwise, how do, how do people know that they are amongst other people like them, okay? So, and then that, that, that is a beautiful idea because then you can ex exactly find the people you want to be with in your life. Or I'm just listening to me use first person. I can exactly find the pre people that I want in my life, that I want to connect with by embodying that and what, what drew me to the idea during the walk was that I saw uh, a guy he was a uh, it was so obvious that he was a construction worker of some sort a handyman of some sort because I don't know the kind of t-shirt he was wearing the jeans it seemed like maybe there's some kind of paint or something on the t-shirt or something right he just it was so obvious that he was some kind of he worked with his hands and like as a handyman or a painter or a construction or something so the aesthetic was there and so that made me recognize him so if I wanted in my life at a certain point to make connections with someone like that, I could seek them out. I would know where they are, right? It's him. I would know. And then I was thinking about myself wearing this, this, this uh, drab black, black t-shirt, these uh, old navy dra track pants. Like, what am, I, what am I presenting? What is the aesthetic that I'm presenting? Do I fit in anywhere? If someone wanted to, to, to pigeonhole me, uh, to seek out a certain kind of person, like, would they be able to find who I am? And the answer is straight up no, right? I don't fit in as a jogger. I don't fit in as an academic. I don't fit in as the construction worker that I am. I don't fit in as a deviant that I am, like uh, my, 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 my history in deviance uh, and, and the unique kind of virtues that, I, that, that gives me. Like, I don't, I don't embody, I don't wear any of that. And so I was thinking what that aesthetic would look like, right? Um, and it's actually pretty cool. Like if when I think about, because I, I do have a certain kind of problem where I inhabit too many worlds, and so we we kind uh, I kind of um, kind of part of life is to kind of hone in really on uh, on the few things you want to project, or the one thing even that you want to project. But let's just say few things because it's very hard to project just one thing. Uh, that uh, you kind of have to hone away a lot, cut away a lot of the bullshit, right? Uh, so it's like we project too much. I project too much. And so people cannot find me. I cannot find my tribe. I cannot find my family, my social circle, my bubble, the connections, the romantic partner that I want to, partners that I want to be with, right? But what would it look like? It's actually pretty cool. Like I work in the trades, right? So <clears throat> there's a certain way of dressing that I like being in the trades, like uh, the kind of boots that I wear, uh, the jeans, like uh, it, and and uh, it's like also there's an opportunity cost, right? Like, so like, what am I not wearing being in the trades? That's also ident identifies me in some way and I take pride in that, right? I don't just, like I've tried various styles. There are styles that, that I don't, 
that, that I don't resonate with. And that also is a marker in a way, right? So there's a kind of way that, like when I go to shops, shop at uh, Marks, right? I like the clothes at Marks. I like to wear that stuff, right? That kind of, that kind of aesthetic as a tradesperson. Also, I identify it uh, as being an academic. I, I tie that in, tie those two in in a really cool way, I think. And so I love these glasses that I wear, right? These aviator glasses. Um, uh, when back when I used to carry a book in the bus, people used to. There would be girls that would uh, just chat up, chat me up on the bus, and they would ask me like, "Hey, what what is that book or something? Like, what are you reading or or something like that, right?" So, and um, when I had social anxiety, I, I would kind of uh, not do that because I uh, I was anxious about like, what will people think if I carry a book or something, right? But now it, it's so fucking stupid, like or, or like chess, right? Or, uh, there's an anxiety about like setting up a chessboard in a park or something, let's say. Or I used to have anxiety about own, owning up to being a chess player, but like being an academic, I can own that fully now. Like I love these aviator glasses. Um, what else would an academic wear? There's um, a kind of style like, like it's hard to describe, but I, I know what it looks like in my mind. Like uh, uh, it's it's you know like cardigans or like uh, I don't know. It's, it's a certain kind of st like a badass kind of academic style. Like the people who like uh, on commercial drive or like who do PhDs or whatever, they, they, they have a certain, and, and also the people they hang around with, I would love to hang around with those people. Um, I won't go too much into that aesthetic because I have an idea in my mind and I don't want to talk, talk about it too much in, in, in this video. Uh, I'll just start to uh, inhabit it more and more. So there's that, the academic, there's the tradesperson, I work with my hands, but then there's also the, the fact that I'm a badass because uh, I have this history of deviance I have a history of uh, not following, like um, being a rule breaker, uh, kind of having incredible, incredible license in my life to do shit. I don't play by the rules, and I always, always feel like in my, in my, in my deep soul that I was meant to lead a gang. Uh, I know it sounds so stupid, but like, I'm a natural leader. Uh, I don't give a fuck. Like, I just, I want to make shit happen on my terms, and. Uh, and and so there's an aesthetic associated with that too, like given given my my history, um, so tattoos, right? Like I already have one tattoo right here. I haven't shown it yet, but uh, I want to be covered with tattoos straight up, uh, because that also that that captures that deviant. Like deviance is not all bad, right? Like breaking the rules is just one manifestation or one symptom of uh, of, of 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 creative mind of creative thinking, right? That that same mind. That makes us break rules in one way in society, let's say, given other factors are in pre are in place. That same mind also allows us to break out of norms, breaks break us out of boxes, break out of functional fixedness, that kind of constrained black and uh, constrained thinking. Uh, and I and I own that right. So so tattoos, the tradesperson, the academic. If I wear that fully, that aesthetic, what that looks like, I have a clear picture in my mind, and it's way better than this shit, right? And so then when somebody, either when somebody sees me walking anywhere even, or even just being at a coffee shop or whatever, they know what I stand for and they can come talk to me if they are interested in that. But also when I see uh, a, a girl that I'm interested in anywhere, uh, then I can go uh, talk to her and I feel the license to do so. I feel like uh, she's, that she will recognize a member of her own tribe, right? And also, and of course, I'm, the stuff I'm not including there, for example, I also, I value health and fitness. Uh, I, I really value that. And I have not been embodying that. Like, um, so if I was in really good shape too, then uh, when I see a sexy girl that I like, I, um, it's not that I need it, but it's like, why not wear that aesthetic, right? Why not wear that flag, that emblem, that, that logo uh, that helps me uh, connect instantly with my tribe, with my family, right? So that's... Yeah, that's where I was going with that. And one final kind of uh, turn that my thoughts took on this walk was um, that I have this tendency of trying to solve kind of the whole world's problems. Like anytime I encounter something that perplexes me, I go beyond. I I, I go beyond to try to solve like everybody's problems, right? Because then I think like if I solve my problem, I will be trespassing on somebody else and causing them a problem. How would they fix their problem? How would society fix that problem? Whatever, and. Uh, I think there's a better way around this, and it's just that I am only responsible for solving my own problems, okay? 
and I and it, it drew me back to an idea I had covered a long, long, long time ago, many, many years ago. I made a video on this YouTube channel. You guys can still find it on memoirs. Okay, on memoirs as the way to kind of life's meaning for a person. Okay, memoir as that path because everybody encounters their own problems uh, in life based on their situation situation in society. And this t connects to age-old sociological literature, like C. Wright Mills, when he talked about the sociological imagination, like uh, the fact that uh, the idea that personal, personal troubles are often social issues. So he enjoined people, he encouraged people, sociolog sociologists or otherwise, to, uh, uh, to develop that kind of thinking that connects personal troubles to social issues. Um, <clears throat> and I buy into that. Not all the time, but but mostly. Like it's it's one path. It's a maybe it's the only path to meaning. Really, is that based on where you find where I find myself in uh, in society, the the unique problems that I have, there's a great likelihood that other people will also be dealing with those problems. To the so the the extent to which other people share my problems, or the extent to which other to which other people are like me or find themselves in a similar situation, when I solve my own problems, I actually. It puts me in a prime place to help them also, right? So, and also it means that I don't have to solve everybody else's problems because there are other people better suited to solve their own problems. And this also ties into like the way I would love to do therapy, right? If I ever found myself in that modality, it's like, I would, I, I want to just, I want to create the space for other people to solve their own problems. Okay, and this, this answers a kind of objection or a problem that I had because when I solve my own problems, I tend to trespass, trespass on other people and make it more difficult for them to follow, uh, solve their own problems. And I won't give the specific example that I have in my mind because it's too personal. But uh, there, in an abundant world, this doesn't happen. Like so when you solve your own problems in an abundant world, you are not trespassing on anybody else. And I do have this faith of an abundant world, but I'm also not going to do it blindly. I think, yes, there's enough to go around, but... Uh, for the, for that abundant world to exist, we all uh, it also behooves me to create the conditions for somebody else to have the space and the liberty and the luxury uh, enough means to solve their own problems, right? So, for example, uh, there's a bare minimum, right, that somebody needs to solve their own problems, and so I don't have to solve I don't have to solve their own problems for them. Uh, I think it's amazing that it, they have they get the life satisfaction, the life's meaning. From solving their own problems but at minimum I can give them the space to do that so there's a kind of moral element to this but the moral element is is a lot lower a lot small the bar is a lot lower than what moralists uh, put down on paper like that's too much okay I am not responsible for solving anybody else's problems they are better I, I, I to do so to think that I am responsible for solving anybody else's problems is to I don't know what the word is like pedantic is that the word or like ped it starts with the P ah uh, oh, it's not gonna, uh, pedant no, not pedantic ah uh, uh, fuck patronizing is that the word like patron I know it's not the word patronizing them fuck I don't know man no whatever it's like uh yeah, so it's like everybody has an easy source of meaning in their life uh, in that way, the sociological imagination that I talked about. Uh, my, my basic, like, low bar of morality is just to, just to make sure that other people have the space to do so. Uh, and, if, and if I ever found myself in, like, a therapeutic modality, like, in that role, that's, the, that's all I need to do. I don't have to... So, and it also, like, clues me into, like, Therapy, man, is it's not about solving the other person's problems. It's about encouraging that out of them. They have the means, and that's their life's meaning. And to to take away that is is an evil. Uh, in therapy, all one must do is create the space for the other person to be able to solve their own problems. And and so this is my one gripe. Uh, well, I don't like framing things in terms of gripes. Because I see how, whenever I complain about shit, complain about society, it, it, it weakens me. I see it in my face. I would rather talk about any problem in, in, how, in the positive things I would do to rectify, the, to, to make this, to ameliorate the situation, to make it better. So let's reframe this, okay? 
I think more can be, uh, I see a need. I see a, 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 uh, a possibility, a, an opportunity. I see an opportunity to make it easier and better for people to be able to do this, to engage in that's in memoir making, to make, to be able to process and, uh, be able to process and make use of their own experience and, and be the authorities of their own experience in this way and use that to help other people um, because what happens right now is that uh, it's a uh, fuck it's going to complain again fuck. <laughs> maybe there's a, a way to reframe this positively but okay I'll, I'll let myself complain a little bit it's like <laughs> right now it's very hard for someone to to mind their own experience okay and to be the authorities of their own experience and then to teach other people and help other people as the authority of their own experience, okay? Because we have institutions that have monopolized the tools, the tools and platforms to be able to do so. For example, school. School has monopolized all the tools of like, uh, like in psychology or sociology or something. So it's like we have to defer to experts like PhDs to tell us about our own, like, to be able to mine our own problems, right? Or therapists, we've deferred that. Like we've, they've monop the institutions have monopolized that. So it's like, if I find myself in a, in a predicament, like a, a weakness of character or anything like that, I cannot. I still cannot be the authority of my own saving myself because I have to defer to somebody else, an institution that I can't even make it through because you have to get a PhD that I cannot get. The, like you know what I mean? Like uh, those tools need to be open access 100% so that anybody, a homeless person or whatever, would just like, can, uh, and they can be helped. They can be helped. Like, I won't go into this too much, but like, uh, there's, there's something lacking, man. And then like, when they solve their own shit, there should be a very easy, ready path to be able to kind of sponsor other people or like, help other people deal with that shit. They, the person who has beaten this shit uh, uh, and used had properly mined their own experience, they should be the authorities to uh, help somebody else. But uh, that doesn't exist in our society, right? We've off, like, that whole process has been monopolized by institutions. That is something that I wish to kind of uh, make better, ameliorate, okay? So yeah, uh, what are the takeaways for me, man? It's, uh, mostly it's like the, the cult like finding my own social circle and and the way I go about this first is to uh, cultivate my own aesthetic, right? I want to, not this shit, like this, this, I'm projecting either too much or nothing. <laughs> Probably nothing, right? Uh, to find my social circle, I, and like, what would it look like, that uh, aesthetic? I mean, of course, other people can read, more readily answer that, but just to give like one example, like if you're an engineer, there's there you just wear the Rolex, man. Wear the Rolex, right? <laughs> like, yeah, there's there's all all sorts of social evils. Okay, maybe don't wear the Rolex, fuck. I don't know. Just but there's a way that an engineer, let's say, dresses. There's a way that a sports person dresses. There's a way that a fit person ca uh, carries himself. Like, you want to connect with fit fit people, be fit, right? Like that's. Uh, and it comes to like finding a romantic partners or anything like that. It's be the person that you want to attract, literally. And so that's kind of the intervention to myself. That's what I take away from all this.